Hello, everybody. I want to explain a little bit more about automorphisms. And in particular, I wanted to mention the fact that the collection of automorphisms itself forms a group under function composition. All right, so what is an automorphism? Remember, an automorphism is just an isomorphism phi that happens to go from a group G to itself. So what distinguishes an, an automorphism from an isomorphism, in an isomorphism, this could be G mapping to H. But in an automorphism, this has to be G mapping to G. So we saw last time what the automorphisms of Z mod 10 are. Um, you'll remember that if two groups are um, isomorphic, then one is cyclic if and only if the other is cyclic. And furthermore, um, a generator of one cyclic group under an isomorphism has to get mapped to a generator of, of the other cyclic group. So in automorphisms, if you have an automorphism of a cyclic group, it has to take a generator of that cyclic group to another generator of that cyclic group. Uh, in particular, Z10 is a cyclic group. One of its generators is one because you can add one to itself um, repeatedly and get all the elements of Z mod 10. The other generators of Z mod 10 are just the numbers relatively prime to 10. So one, three, seven, and nine. So since an automorphism from Z mod 10 to itself is an isomorphism, it had better send a, the generator one to another generator of Z10, namely three, um, one, three, seven, or nine. And those are in fact the only automorphisms of Z mod 10. So the only automorphisms of Z mod 10 are the four automorphisms that map one to one, or one to three, or one to seven, or one to nine. We'll call those automorphisms alpha one, alpha three, alpha seven, and alpha nine. And we saw last time that once you know where a generator one gets mapped, that determines where any arbitrary element k gets mapped. So alpha one maps an arbitrary element k of z mod 10 to one times k. And for example, alpha 7 maps an arbitrary element k in z mod 10 to 7 times k. So we can picture alpha 3. It's this automorphism from z 10 to itself. It multiplies every element by 3. So 0 gets mapped to 0, 1 gets mapped to 3, 2 gets mapped to 6, 3 gets mapped to 9, 4 gets mapped to 4 times 3, which is 12, but mod 10, that's 2 etc. And it satisfies the, the property you expect of any automorphism or isomorphism. Namely, if you combine two elements, like 2 and 1, you combine to get 3 in Z mod 10, and then map that over to get 9. That's the same thing as mapping 2 and 1 over, namely multiplying by 3 to get 6 and 3, and then combining them in this, this second copy of Z mod 10, again, to get 9. All right, so the new fact that I wanted to share with you is theorem 6.4 in our book. It says, if G is a group, then the collection ought G of all automorphisms of G itself forms a group under function composition. So in the case when, when G is Z mod 10, Ot G is the collection of all automorphisms of Z mod 10. Well, I just told you there were four of them. So if, if G is Z mod 10, then Ot G consists of four elements, alpha 1, alpha 3, alpha 7, and alpha 9. Okay, so G is an arbitrary group. Ot G is the collection of all automorphisms of G. And the automorphisms themselves form a group. How do you combine two automorphisms? You compose them. All right, so the example you should think in mind is G is Z mod 10, and the automorphisms of Z mod 10 
is the set consisting of alpha 1, 3, 7, and 9. And how do I combine two elements of this group? Well, I just compose those, those, uh, those isomorphisms. OK, so I don't think this theorem will play a huge role in our class, but it's good to be aware of. And, and it's an important theorem for later in algebra. Um, when you look at the group of automorphisms, it's definitely different than the original group you started with. So we started in our example with G being Z mod 10, which has 10 elements. The automorphisms of, of Z10, remember there's only four. So we went from G being Z10 with 10 elements to the automorphisms of Z10, a totally different group. It has only four elements. Have we seen this group with four elements before? Yeah. So it, it turns out that the automorphism group of Z10 is isomorphic to the group of units mod 10 under multiplication mod 10. So in U10, you can take, for example, 9 and 7 and multiply them and get uh, uh, 63, which mod 10 is 3. That's, that's how you multiply 9 and 7 in U10. Well, in the automorphism group of Z10, two of our automorphisms are alpha 9 and alpha 7. And the group structures are preserved between these two groups. If I compose alpha 9 with alpha of 7, I indeed get alpha of 3. So how do I see that those, these automorphisms on the left and on the right are equal? Well, to see that functions are equal, you just plug in an arbitrary input k and show that you get the same answer on both sides. So let's do this. How do I verify this equality here? Well, let's plug in an arbitrary input k. If I apply alpha 9 composed with alpha 7 to k, by definition, that's alpha 9 of alpha 7 of k. Remember, alpha 7 just multiplies by 7. So alpha 7 of k is 7 times k. And then alpha 9 of this input is just 9 times whatever is inside. 9 times 7 times k is by associativity the same as 9 times 7 times k. And then 9 times 7 is 63. Um, we're in this group z mod 10. And so 63 mod 10 is just 3. So mod 10 multiplying by 7 and then by 9 is just the same as multiplying by 3. And so I get 3 times k, which is an indeed alpha 3 applied to k. So just like 9 times 7 is equal to 3 in u10, we verified that my automorphism in this automorphism group alpha 9 and alpha 7, they compose together to give me alpha 3. So you can draw the multiplication tables um, for these groups. Um, so what we have here is the multiplication table for U10. Its elements are 1, 3, 7, and 9, and the operation is multiplication mod 10. We could also draw the multiplication table for this group of automorphisms of Z10. The four automorphisms were alpha 1, 3, 9, and 7, depending on where they mapped 1. And as, you, um, as we saw up above, we could try composing any two of these automorphisms, and we'll get a third. And the pattern is totally paralleled by how multiplication works in, in U10. All right, let me just end this uh, video by saying that everything we did on this page is not specific to Z10. So for any integer n, um, the automorphism group of Z mod nZ is isomorphic to un, the group of units mod n. And so, um, you know, what are the group of units mod n? Well, they're just the numbers relatively prime to n. Those are also the generators of Z mod n, and we saw that the automorphisms of Z mod n 
we're in one-to-one -one correspondence with the generators of Zn because any automorphism of Zn um, sends one to another generator. And so, you know, we'll just label this group of automorphisms um, by all those alphas sub somethings where those somethings are the generators of Z mod NZ, or in other words, the numbers relatively prime to N. Okay, so in summary, the main point of this video that it is that if G is a group, then the set ought G of automorphisms of G is also itself a group. Um, the function or the, the binary operation in this group of automorphisms is function composition. And a mistake that beginners make is, is thinking that G and the automorphism group of G are the same. No, that's certainly not. The key, main example to keep in mind is, is Z mod 10, right? Z mod 10 is a group with 10 elements, whereas its automorphism group, the automorphisms of Z mod 10, is a group with only four elements. Alpha 1, Alpha 3, Alpha 7, and Alpha 9. Alright, thanks.